Jeff, you've talked several times about this group. They, these guys have kind of gotten over themselves. They've gotten past themselves to look at the, the team first. Um, does that mentality maybe help when you guys maybe aren't getting the recognition that some people think you deserve it? They, it, it doesn't bother them maybe as much because you know they're sort of like, whatever, we, we care about March and not what the rankings are on February 12th. You know, to be honest with you, I don't know what they think because I've never talked to them about it. Um, all we've talked about is trying to get better each day. I'm pretty sure they probably feel a certain way about it because as a, as a player, you always want to feel like you're respected. Um, but that's not, that's not a conversation that I've had with them about what do you think about what other people think. The thing we've talked about since we've been together is just concentrate on us. Like what can we can control? The thing that we can control is us. How hard we play, how together we are, how unselfish we are, you know, understanding the scouting report, um, being able to try to execute a game plan, you know, holding each other accountable. Those are the things we can't worry about what the external world or the people that are in our sport or whoever's doing whatever thinks. We just focus on us and we've been pretty good at that. Hopefully we can continue to be good at that. When, when you were a player, how much did you read the paper, check the polls, keep up on things? I didn't. I didn't. I mean, once I got into this, um, and I don't know if it's because I grew up in it, my father was a coach, I learned not to really pay much attention to the outside world or to what people outside thought. It's more difficult now because when I was playing, there was no social media. There was the internet was brand new. No one really understood it. Um, you had talk radio. I mean, you didn't even have message boards back then, and talk radio was just you know coming you know, where it was pretty, you know, big. I mean, my first year we were really good. We were ranked number one in the country for a good part of the season. My sophomore year, I was on the worst team probably ever at Duke. I'm glad I didn't listen to stuff then. My senior year at Duke, I got booed at Cameron. That was very difficult for me. Um, I remember being at a home game, at you know, the next game after that, and I remember being out shooting before the game, and I looked up and my family's passing around a newspaper. There was an article in the state newspaper there, the News and Observer. There was a big picture of me and it said something, I think the headline was something like a fallen star. That was difficult for a guy that loved the program and was trying like heck to fight and to get this thing turned around. So I do have empathy for these young guys, but it's it's one of the reasons I we try to talk to them about not listening to that stuff, not paying attention. Don't look at social media, don't search your name, don't do these things but that probably falls on deaf ears because these young people are addicted to it. Um, and so it's, uh, it, it's just, it's a completely different time now, but the thing that we've done a good job is staying present with each other and, and not allowing that to consume us. I, I know that. Well, T.O. brings great passion every day, um, as do my other assistants. You know, I think, I think we do a good job of uh, development, period. I think if you look at our track record, for the most part, I'm not saying with everything, but, you know, getting guys that are not ranked or low in rankings and you look at their production and how they've improved and gotten better. Um, he brings great passion, great energy to them, not just on the court, but for them, for who they are as people. I think they know that he cares deeply about them not just what they can do on the basketball court, but he cares deeply about them. T.O., like my brother and I, and like Milan, he grew up with a father that was a coach. And so he grew up seeing the impact that coaches can have on young people. And I think that was his life's dream, was to be able to be like his dad and have a similar impact. And I think if you look probably everywhere he's been, I know I, he was an assistant at Duke my last two years as a player. Um, and then if you look throughout his career at all the places he's been, I would imagine everyone would say, man, that guy's really passionate and he cared about me, not just me as a player and what I could do, but he really cared deeply about me. Um, and as a coach, man, that's, that's the one thing you always want your guys to be able to say is that, man, this guy really cares about me.